Hi, my name is Stephen Lloyd. I'm an independent skills tester with the state of Idaho. As you watch this video at home, it would be very helpful for you to point to the items on the truck I'm pointing at and talk along with me. This will aid you greatly in preparation for this test. I would now like to read you the instructions for the pre-trip inspection. The pre-trip inspection consists of thoroughly inspecting certain portions of the vehicle. Point or touch the vehicle components you're inspecting. Tell the examiner what the components are and what defects you are looking for. Inspect your vehicle in any order you wish, but be sure to include the in-cab inspections, the engine startup checks, the engine components, brake system check, the external components, and the drivetrain components. You should walk completely around the vehicle when doing your pre-trip inspection. If a component is found on both sides of the vehicle, you need only describe and inspect one side for this test. You should inspect the steering axle, the drive axle, and one trailer axle for this test. The examiner can assist you with lighting equipment inspections. Tell the examiner which lights you are checking. You may use a vehicle inspection memory aid from the CDL driver's manual. The vehicle inspection memory aid must have no writing on it or notes on it. Discuss this exercise with your examiner and ask any questions if you are unsure what to do. To start the pre-trip inspection, check under the vehicle to make sure there are no leaks and that the vehicle is not leaning to one side or the other. Moving right into the engine compartment, check the coolant, check the oil and the power steering fluid and the washer fluid to make sure they are full, the caps are on and none of them are leaking. Move to the hoses, inspect them for damage, make sure there's no cracks or bulges in them, make sure they are mounted securely. Next, we'll check the belts. Make sure the belts have no cracks, no frays, no check marks. Make sure that they are mounted properly and that there is no more than a half to three quarters inch of deflection in the belts. From the belts, move over to the other side of the motor and check the alternator to make sure that it is mounted securely. All the wires are connected properly and it is in good repair. Check the water pump to make sure it is not leaking. It's mounted securely and in good repair. Moving to the fan, check the fan blades and the fan itself to make sure that nothing is cracked or broken and it's mounted securely. Check the fan shroud to make sure it is mounted securely and it is in good repair. From there, we move to the air compressor, make sure it is mounted securely and it is not leaking and all the hoses are connected properly. Now we move to the steering, make sure that the steering shaft or column is mounted securely. There's no aftermarket welds in it. Make sure that the knuckles and all the bolts are connected properly. Check the steering box to make sure it's not leaking, it's mounted securely and all the hoses are connected properly. Next we go to the pitman arm and the drag links all the way across the vehicle. Make sure all of the cotter keys and bolts are in good repair. Make sure there are no cracks or welds in the steering linkage. From the steering, we move right over to the suspension. Make sure the shock absorber is mounted securely and not leaking. Check the springs for cracked, broken, or missing springs. Make sure that the hangers on both ends are mounted to the frame and the springs properly. Check the U-bolts to make sure that they are mounted properly and there's no cracks and they're in good repair. From the suspension, we move right into the brakes. Check the brake hose for cracks, check marks, bulges. Make sure it's mounted securely and not leaking. The hose goes into the canister. Make sure that the canister is in good repair. It's mounted securely and not leaking. Out of the canister comes the slack adjuster. Make sure with the brakes applied, it's at a 90 degree angle. If the brakes were not applied, you could pull on it and make sure that it has no more than one inch of play. On the inside of the brakes, we wanna check the brake pad to make sure that it's not cracked or broken and that there is adequate pad. Check the drums and linings for repair and make sure that there is no debris and grease on those. Now for the tires, you wanna make sure you have 4 30 seconds of tread on the tire. There's no cracks, there's no checks, there's no bulges. Make sure it's inflated properly. Move to the bead of the rim, make sure it has no cracks in it. Check to the rim itself, make sure it has no cracks or welds. Make sure that the lug nuts are present, make sure they're tight. Make sure there's no rust streaks that come off them that would indicate that they're loose. Check the oil seal to make sure it's, it's full and that it's not leaking. 
We move to the mirror of the truck and make sure it's mounted securely and not broken. Open and close the door to make sure it operates properly. Check the catwalk steps, make sure there's no debris on them and they're mounted securely. Check the fuel cap, make sure it's on tightly. Check the straps for the fuel tank, make sure the fuel tank is mounted securely. And then finally check underneath the fuel tank and make sure there is no leaks. Check this catwalk here, no debris, mounted securely. Check the catwalks here, here and here, make sure they're mounted securely. Check the battery box to make sure it's, the lid is on tight, make sure the battery box is secure. You would open it up and make sure that there's no corrosion on the battery cables and that they're mounted securely. We would check the electrical connections to make sure they're connected to the truck properly. Check them for general condition and repair, make sure they're in good shape. Check the service lines, make sure they're in good repair. Check where they connect to the truck, make sure there's no leaks, they're connected properly and secure. Follow them all the way to the trailer. Make sure the connection points, solid, connected, no leaking. It's all in general good repair. Do the same thing with the electrical connection. You, want to, you would go to the other side, check the exhaust system all the way down and underneath the truck. Make sure there's no soot marks. Make sure that it's mounted securely and it's in good repair. Check the entire length of the frame. Make sure that there's no cracks or welds or extra holds. We want to drop down and look underneath at the drive shaft and make sure that the, the bolts are in good repair. There's no bends or cracks in the drive shaft. As we move under here to this back axle, we want to make sure that this flap is mounted securely. It's virtually the same as the front of the truck. We want to check the spring hangers, the spring U-bolts, the springs themselves, just like we did on the front for cracks and make sure they're in general good repair. On the brakes, we want to make sure you check the brake hose again. Make sure you check the canister, make sure the slack adjuster, one inch of play at a 90 degree angle when it's uh, the brakes are are applied on the tires. On the back, we want to make sure that there's two thirty seconds of tread. Again, that there's no cracks or bulges in the tire. Check the bead of the rim. Check the rim itself to make sure it has no cracks in it. Again, check the lug nuts to make sure that they're all present and tight. Make sure there's no rust streaks coming off them. And again, you'd check the oil seal here to make sure that it is not leaking. Move around to the back of the tires, look in, inside, make sure there's no wood or no rocks or any debris that could come out during travel. We want to check the mud flap to make sure it's mounted securely, covers the width of both tires, and it's no more than 10 inches off the ground. Now we move up to the coupling system. We want to make sure that the fifth wheel plate is mounted securely to the frame of the truck, as well as the platform. We want to make sure that the Fifth wheel is greased properly, it's in good repair. Make sure that the release arm is locked and in place. We want to go up underneath and look inside and make sure that the locking jaws are mounted secure around the kingpin. We want to check the apron of the trailer to make sure that it's in good repair and it's greased properly. And then we want to make sure that there's no gap between the apron and the fifth wheel itself. And then finally, we want to look and inspect the kingpin itself to make sure it's main, mounted to the trailer frame properly and it's in good repair and it has no damage. Okay, now we need to inspect the trailer. We want to check the side markers and reflectors for condition. Check the entire length of the frame of the trailer on both sides, front and back. Check underneath all the cross members and make sure there's no cracks or welds and the, the trailer's in good repair. Move on down and check the landing gear. Make sure it's up all the way and stowed correctly. Make sure that the handle is secure. Move down the side of the trailer. Make sure that if you have any load or doors or ties or anything on this truck that could cause a hazard that it's strapped down and all your doors are closed. And then let's move to the back. Now we need to inspect the back axle on the trailer. It's really exactly the same as the trailer, the back axle we did on the truck right there. So again, check the springs the spring hangers, the U-bolts. On this suspension, there is a torque arm. We would like to inspect that, make sure it's in good repair. Same as the brakes up front there. We want to check the brake hose and the brake canister, the slack adjuster, and the drums and the linings, just, just like we mentioned on that axle up there. The tires are the same, 230 seconds of tread on the back. Make sure there's nothing in between the tires, rocks, wood, debris. Check the sidewall of the tire for cracks or for bulges check marks, make sure it's inflated properly, all the tires on the back here, make sure that the rim has no cracks in it, the bead has no cracks, check the lug nuts, make sure they're all tight and present, 
and check the oil seal here to make sure it's full and not leaking. As we move to the back of the trailer, again, we want to check the side markers and uh, the reflectors. Go ahead and check the mud flaps on the back of the trailer. Make sure that they're no more than 10 inches off the ground and they cover the width of both tires and they're mounted securely. We want to check all the lights in the back for condition and operation as well. And once you're done with that, that completes the outside of the pre-trip inspection. So we'll move to the end cab, check some lights, do the end cab inspections and, and we'll be good. For the end cab part of the inspection, the first thing that you do is have the examiner go to the front of the truck and we'll do the light check. Activate the headlights, the high beam, back to low beam, left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way flashers, signal to the top of the truck and have the examiner check the clearance lights. Instruct the examiner to go down the side of the truck and inspect the side markers and the reflectors, make sure that they're working. Then have the examiner go to the back of the truck and repeat the process. We'll check the tail lights, the left turn, the right turn, the four-way flashers, and the brake lights. Once the lights are, are checked correctly, look over your left hand shoulder, inspect the seat belt to make sure it operates correctly and latches, check the driver's side window, make sure it's clear with no cracks and no damage, make sure that there's no extra stickers that would impede your view, check the driver's side mirror to make sure it's clean and adjusted properly, Work across the top and check the front windshield, make sure there's no cracks, make sure there's no extra stickers. Move to the side, check the passenger side window and the, the passenger mirror to make sure they're clean, make sure the mirror is adjusted, check the passenger side seat belt. Then just work down, check the windshield wipers, make sure that the, the washers work. Move down further, check the steering wheel with the engine running, make sure there's no more than two inches of play in the steering wheel. Then look through the steering wheel and check the gauges. We'd like to check the oil pressure, the water temperature, the fuel, the voltmeter, and check both of the air gauges. Moving from left to right, check the heater and the defroster to make sure that they work correctly, and then check the horn on the truck. Once that completed, Move down to the pedals, make sure the fuel pedal is clear of any obstruction, check the brake pedal, make sure the, the clutch has less than one inches of play and disengages before it gets to the floor. Check the gear shift, put the clutch in, make sure it goes in and out of gear properly. And then you want to check and make sure that you have your emergency equipment. You want to make sure that you have a fire extinguisher that's charged and rated, make sure you have a first aid kit, make sure you have your emergency triangles and extra fuses. Once all of that is completed, we wanna start the vehicle up and bring the air pressure all up to between 100 and 120 PSI. The pressure is already up, so we will shut the truck off, turn the key back to the auxiliary position Release both brake control valves. Apply the brake for one minute, and this is a dual air system, so we don't want to lose more than four PSI in that minute. If it was a single system, we'd only need to lose more than less than three PSI in a minute. Once you've completed the leakage test, Pump the brakes until you get down to somewhere plus or minus 60 PSI and you should receive a warning buzzer. There's the warning buzzer. Then continue to pump the brakes and somewhere between 20 and 40 P 45 PSI, both of those air valves should pop out. Excellent, they both popped. At this time, you, need, you have three more brake checks that you need to complete. Start the motor, release the trailer brake, leave the parking brake or the tractor protection valve on, put it in gear and pull against it. Make sure it holds the vehicle. Once that's done, release the tractor protection valve or the parking brake, pull the trailer brake, 
pull against the trailer brakes and make sure they hold. Once you've completed that, push both the yellow and the red knob in, which releases your brakes. Gently pull forward at five miles an hour and apply the brakes and make sure you don't move to the left or the right and everything works correctly. That completes the pre-trip inspection. Before we move into the skills test and to the road test, I'd like to explain how to properly operate the clutch in this vehicle. It's extremely important that the clutch is always on the floor or all the way out when you're operating it. At no time should the clutch ever be in the what I call no man's land or halfway. If that happens, the clutch is being burnt up. So let me just kind of show how you would do that. If you're starting off and want to move forward, just put the vehicle in low gear. You don't need any accelerator for this. Just let the clutch out slowly and the truck will creep forward. When you reach the end or where you want to stop, put the clutch all the way to the floor, apply the brake and stop. If you need to reverse, put it in reverse and do the same thing again. Just slowly let the clutch out until the vehicle rolls backwards. Let it all the way out. Again, no need on the skills test to use the accelerator. Back the vehicle up. When you're ready to stop, put, push the clutch in and apply the brake. When you go out to go on the road trip, basically the same thing. Again, we don't need the accelerator and the clutch to be used at the same time. Simply push the clutch in, put it in low or first to start, release the clutch, release the brake. When you roll forward, apply the accelerator. If you need, when you need to shift gears, same thing. Clutch all the way to the floor, put it, put it into your next gear, release the clutch, then apply the accelerator. To downshift, it's pretty simple. Let off the accelerator, push in the clutch, pull it down into the gear you want, and then release the clutch, and then apply the accelerator. Now we'll move into the skills test and see how it goes. You will perform three different exercises to demonstrate your ability to maneuver a commercial vehicle safely. You are allowed a specific number of pull-ups and looks on each exercise. Pull-ups are a change of direction to reposition your vehicle. Looks are when you exit the vehicle to check your position. You may place a reference marker to help you determine the distance of the exercise boundary line. You will receive negative points for excessive pull-ups. You will receive negative points if your vehicle or trailer cross over the boundary lines. Secure the vehicle by setting your parking brake and placing your vehicle in neutral or park. While exiting the vehicle, if testing in a semi-truck tractor, face the vehicle and maintain three points of contact at all times while exiting. If the examiner raises their hand, immediately stop, secure the vehicle, and wait for further instructions. Instructions for the straight line backing. Drive forward through the alley until the rear of your vehicle is past the end of the white lines. Back straight through the alley until the front of your vehicle has cleared the last set of cones. You are allowed one free pull-up during the exercise. You are allowed one look and may exit the vehicle only once during this exercise. Secure the vehicle and sound your horn when you are finished. For the forward stop, pull straight forward without crossing over or touching any of the white lines. Stop when the rear of your trailer gets near the end of the white lines. Back straight through the alley again without crossing over or touching either white line. Keep in mind while you're backing up here, if you happen to get a little bit crooked or you're not comfortable with your position, feel free to pull up. You have one free pull up on this exercise if you'd like to use it. It's important not to cross over any of the lines. If you're going to hit a line, stop, pull forward, fix your mistake, and then continue backing. Stop when the front of the truck reaches the first set of cones. For the offset backing exercise, drive forward to the left alley and stop the vehicle at the end of the white lines. Back your vehicle to the opposite lane to the right until the front of your vehicle has passed the first set of cones. You are allowed two free pull-ups during this exercise. 
you are allowed two free looks to check your position during this exercise. Secure the vehicle and sound your horn when you are finished. For the offset backing, pull up to the left in the left hand alley. Until the front of the truck reaches the end of the white lines. Backing to the right, put your vehicle back into the boundaries. Keep in mind that during this exercise, if you get yourself in a position where you're not comfortable, feel free to pull up. You have the two free pull ups, use them if you need them. It's just important to note that if you're going to cross over a line or hit a cone, there's less points for a pull up than there is for hitting the boundary. So use it if you need it. And stop when the front of the vehicle reaches the first set of cones. Very important that when you do this that you make sure when you finish you are straight and you do not cross over or touching any of the lines or cones from this point backwards. For the alley dock, drive forward past the alley and position your vehicle parallel to the outer boundary line. Back into the alley dock until the rear of your vehicle is inside the three foot stop box. The front of your vehicle may not go beyond the outer boundary. You must finish within three feet of the dock. Do not back past the rear cones. Your vehicle must be straight within the alley dock when completed. You are allowed two free pull-ups during this exercise. You are allowed two free looks and may exit the vehicle a maximum of two times to check behind the vehicle during this exercise. Secure the vehicle. Sound your horn when you are finished. Now for the alley dock, pull up to the left, finish parallel to the outer boundary, or in this case the sidewalk. As you reverse direction, you're going to back up and back the trailer back into the alley dock. Keep in mind, if you need to pull up, you have two free pull-ups on this exercise. However, you cannot pull out any further than the outer boundary, which is the cone that is right out in front of the truck. At this point, you cannot cross over or touch any of the white lines or any of the cones. And you need to finish with the rear of that trailer inside the three-foot stop box without crossing over the back boundary. You've successfully completed the pre-trip inspection and the skills test. Now it's time for the road test. I'll read the instructions for the test and they are as follows. You will take your vehicle out on the road for a trip that will take 30 to 45 minutes. As you drive along the route, the examiner will direct you to perform various maneuvers. You will be given directions for turns and other actions as far in advance as possible. The examiner will be making various scoring marks on the test form while you are driving. The marks do not necessarily mean you have done anything wrong. Concentrate on your driving and do not be concerned about what the examiner is doing. At all times when you are behind the wheel, you are in charge of the vehicle. Do not follow an instruction if the maneuver will cause a hazardous situation. There are no trick directions to get you to do something illegal or unsafe. Before we go on the road trip, I'd like to explain a few things that you can do to be more successful while we're driving. Number one. Seat belt must be on at all times. It's an automatic failure for the test if you don't wear your seat belt. Next, two hands on the steering wheel unless you're shifting or using your turn signal. Make sure you stay in your lane. When you come to an intersection, make sure that you check the traffic. Check to your left and to your right. Make sure you check it before you get to the intersection. Make sure you check it as you go through to make sure it's safe. Make sure you stop well behind cars and stop lines in front of you. You should be able to see pavement in front of your vehicle between you and the stop line or between you and the car in front of you. When you make change, lane changes, it's extremely important to activate your signal. It should be on for five to six seconds. Check your traffic, make the lane change. Only after the lane change is completed, release your turn signal. When you make corners, make sure you do so in a manner that you do not hit any curbs or perform that unsafely in any way. Try not to go over the 
lines in the other lanes as you make your corners. Drive as smoothly and safely as you can. You need to operate the clutch and you need to be able to shift proficiently in order to pass this test. So make sure that you pay attention to the instructions for the, for the clutch operation. And in, in general, just be paying attention to where you are and what, it, what is around you and drive safely and you should do just fine.